very little help and safety. Love it. Oh wow, look at that. My kids call me the Dale Boy or motor vlogging, getting overtaken by bloody mopeds. Well that was an absolute wonderful stay, we're leaving now, it's three nights here and we just said goodbye to a chap who lived just across the road, there's a little shop there, you get a bit of interest from the kids but it's been absolutely superb and he's kept an eye on things, you know, half an eye. What? Orva! Oh, I nearly said bonjour again. So yeah, it's uh, you don't get many spots as beautiful as this, uh, and uh, so there's a little shop over there. Got a few basics, but we had to go into a, you know the odd village to get some better supplies like fresh meat. But it's just a superb area. Everyone's friendly. Bye bye. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend any any bikers coming down the Tizian test towards the end of the Tizian test. You will see that little place there, the little cafe and the little shop. And you'll see the ruins on the left hand side or on the right hand side if you're going up the Tizian test. And it's really worth spending a day or so exploring the area. And go up to the small villages high up in the mountains and get a feel for what it's like to live in those places. I mean, for them to go to the shops, it'll take half a day. Unless you've got a moped, it'll take you a quarter of a day. Yeah, it's very loose rock in, uh, around here, so you, you're going to get some rock falls from time to time. And um, it looks like that's the case here. Whoa, there's one big one there. Good luck. Alright. <laughs> I'm trying to. Oh, it's bloody. Bloody hell, there's a big one that went through that wall then. Jeez. It's places like these in the mountains and my favourite are the real high village mountains and that's where humans and nature live in harmony. Nothing is excessive. There's not enough like potential as in being able to grow to have too many people to spoil the landscape but well, it's very nice seeing villages and people live in a very basic way of life yeah just and an absolutely amazing experience coming down through this road, the Tizian test. And uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty more mountain villages where we're going in the next couple of days or few days. So the landscape may be different again. I mean, there's trees everywhere on this particular route which I love and there's lots of water as you can see down there um, but a few days ago it was quite barren in the mountains and we were a bit disappointed we couldn't collect any wood to uh, to make a to make a fire but we had no problem where we were this time 
even though we had to search really hard there wasn't still a great deal around because actually these trees are so healthy in these mountains there's no very very rarely any dead bits that's why acacia trees is good um, for firewood because um, there's always dead bits in the acacia trees and when we were in the desert with Mohammed the guide that took us through um, obviously a shovel can be useful for digging yourself out of trouble but it was a great way of chopping uh, dead acacia branches from the trees and uh, there's just a massive supply of dead wood in the desert and you'd never go cold or you know go hungry if you needed a cup I thought this part of the journey after the Tizian test would be a bit boring but um, it's not so high so you don't see any snow but it's still beautiful okay if there is a cafe here we might have a cup of tea Hello mate! <laughs> Don't look like it. Okay. No cafe, on to the next one. Oh, someone's got a bit of dosh. Health and safety. <laughs> look at these diggers up here. Awesome. Oh, I wouldn't like to be working up there. Just in case the digger beneath fucking <laughs> started digging out. Oh. So, yeah, they're doing summer around here. Very little health and safety. Love it. Health and safety takes all the fun out of life. Takes away the risk. We need risks in our lives. Look at that, in the UK, there be bollards bloody everywhere, making the place look really untidy. Yeah, look, all they need is one bollard. Oh, two, all right, one at the front. Oh, <laughs> I'm disappointed, there's, t there's far too many bollards. <laughs> well, we've been waiting about 15 minutes for the lorry to be filled. And uh, this would be interesting. Some of the workers. <laughs> Uh, making themselves a tea. They came over because they saw us having a cigarette and asked for a couple. They were very happy that I gave them a couple. Oh, that's nice women actually stop him. Oh, well, they ain't got a wagon to put their stuff in. Uh, looking on the map, there should be a nice spot. This river, I would imagine, becomes a reservoir. That's what it looks like on the map. And there's a, I would imagine there's a decent village down the bottom. Hopefully it'll be a pretty spot and uh, we'll get a nice cup of tea. Because the Tizen Test and this part of the road is the main road, well, one is the main road to Marrakesh. Um, seems like they're trying to widen the road, that's why they're dragging all that rock down and whatever. I swore all this work, I would imagine, is full. No bollards here. Awesome. Oh wow, look at that. Isn't that lovely. Wow, 
I thought it looked nice, but that is just... I remember once when I was in the army, I went to uh, Norway, do some training out there. And we were on a boat going around the fjords. And I remember turning a corner in the boat and seeing, you know, something like that. And I was wowed. Well, I'm wowed now. That just looks absolutely gorgeous. I bet there's some old buildings underneath that. One bollard. Uh, we've got two more down here. And a flag. Was it a dirty rag? No, it's a flag. Well, it's been unusual for us because we've been inland all the time. Except for the sky being blue, we haven't seen any other blue. So this is really nice to see. Okay, we're going to stop here and have a cup of tea. Looks pleasant. There's a cute little pottery place here. I ain't going to buy anything. Ah, look. Pretty stones. Any quartzes and stuff. Cool. We got enough weight. Hi. Oh, about eight kilometers from village called Asni. This is quite a pleasant road. And it gives me confidence that there will be plenty of uh, suitable camping spots. Further, further on from Asni. Okay, we're heading out of the town of Asni. Oh, there's a woodpecker, a green one, right in that tree. Beautiful with a red head. Wow, never seen one in the wild before. So at the moment we are steeply rising higher and higher into the high atlas just so we don't get too high it's going to be cold camping otherwise about 1800 meters in a minute and we're in the clouds uh, yeah so just going to keep an eye out now for a potential camping spot. Be nice if we can get further down in the valley, keep off the mountains because it's obviously it tends to be a bit warmer down there. Anyway, all good adventure, not knowing what to expect. There's pretty much life in the mountains all the time, wherever we've gone. I mean, it'd have to be a pretty inhospitable mountain for humans not to settle here in however small or large way. Humans remind me of um, the natural world, especially the plant kingdom, it uses every possible chance of reproducing. I'm talking about nature and uh, seems like us humans do the same. There's a tiny little plot of land that's usable, we we'll use it. Well, it's nice we're out of the clouds at the moment because we come low enough. And um, passing through another settlement. This is, uh, you know, towards Tizen, uh, Marrakesh. Just 
Hi guys. Okay. <laughs> Can't do it when I'm stood up. Hello sheep. Hello kids. More kids. Hello mate. Hello. There's a massive drop of this little bit of salmon. Look at the football pitch right down the bottom there. It's a big drop. They're like... Oh yeah. Alright mate! <laughs> Hi guys, well we eventually found ourselves a, a campsite, it's uh, just off the road but we're a little bit hidden but I think a few locals have seen us, we're only about 20-30 kilometres you know, from Marrakesh so yeah, hopefully we'll be okay. But anyway, we're right next to a river and um, yeah it's fairly pretty. Um, it'd be nicer over there, but um, yeah, there's no way we're going to get our bikes there. So Ellen's out, Helen's out uh, collecting some wood for a fire in a bit. Good morning, chaps. So um, yeah, we're just coming off this small road, and then we get onto a slightly bigger one, and head into the small into the old town of Marrakesh, which would be. Quite nice, I've been told. So we'll be shortly heading through a town called Tahana out. If you know me by now, it's probably pronounced somewhere completely different. My kids call me the Dale Boy of motor vlogging. The British. <laughs> The British uh, viewers, uh, they'll understand what I'm talking about. I'm always getting my words wrong and using French where <laughs> I shouldn't do. And uh, for the viewers who don't know, Dale Boy was uh, the main character in a comedy sitcom many years ago in the UK. Um, it was called Only Fours and Horses. Ah, this must be the old town. Right, where are we going? Fucking you know. up. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe this is the wrong entrance to a hotel, I don't know. I think this is the back entrance. It's <laughs> well, we're just sat here contemplating which hotel to try. And that over there, across the road, is a petrol station in the middle of an old town in Marrakesh. Crazy, eh? We got a place, a Riyadh at last. This is our seventh Riyadh that we tried. The rest were just fully booked up. But anyway, it's not too bad. This is the roof terrace, all in blue. And we have a view of the old town of Mar Marrakesh. So we're going to go for little walkies. Another little roof terrace down there. And the smallest swimming pool ever. Well, it looks like we're walking through all metal working shops. Cool. Make all sorts here with metal. Oh, 
wood not made in China just full of workshops Yeah, but I really enjoyed the experience to find out what Marrakesh was like, especially the souk. Now we're going to join the mad driving experience that you get in Marrakesh. But it's even mad just bloody walking around, you know, there's so much traffic even in the tiniest of lanes where you wouldn't normally think you would have <laughs> vehicles as a uh, mental but fabulous experience and we're going to head back over the main road towards Wazaza uh, back over to High Atlas but we're going to want to camp in the mountains again before we get to Wazaza, before we do our service on our bikes. Getting overtaken by bloody mopeds. Now we overtake the mopeds. When we was in Marrakesh and we was, it was uh, in the evening and we were sat on the terrace, roof terrace and the call to prayer which is called a muezzin, M-U-E-Z-Z-I-N was quite interested. I mean, obviously we've heard quite a few call to prayers since we've been here in Morocco. And, um, but what I found fascinating about this one is that in view, we could see three or four mosques and they weren't exactly in tune because they were slightly out. Um, each mosque was I don't know, a split second, and one was probably, what, two seconds behind? And, uh, but it was a lovely echo in the sound. I just wish I had it recorded. We're heading towards the famous <coughs> Tizi Antica, and, which is uh, the windy mountain road. It's going to be a, a breeze for us because of what we've already done while we've been in Morocco, but some people have a problem with it. But um, the Tika side um, is named after the river that flows near. That's called Awid, Awid Tika. And uh, Apparently, um, the last Barbary lion which is also called, was called an Atlas lion or a Berber lion and um, it was, they believe the last one was killed in 1942 on the Tizi Antica, which is, is a real shame. So there's no more lions now in Morocco. So Tizi, why is it called Tizi? Like the Tizi and Test and the Tizi Antica, but all I can, it rhymes with Dizzy. 
And with all the hairpin bends, maybe some people get dizzy. Dizzy? Tizzy? I don't know. Just making it up. Ain't that pretty? Our saddlebag 73 would say. A busy little place in the High Atlas Mountains. I think the Tizzy and Tico goes to about, you know, roughly 2,200 meters. So we must have still a way to go. Would love to see a view of Mount Turpical, but no idea if that's going to happen. So I don't know where it is exactly. Like a nice little picnic area here. Kids having fun in the remaining snow. Well, it looks like we are now going down the other side. We, I think we hit the coal, the Saddlewood Mountain, about two minutes back. And now we're going down the Chicken Tikka. There was a huge amount of road work on the uh, Tizzy and Tika. They're constantly trying to widen the road. But I'll be honest, I'll be glad when I'm off it because I haven't... The first part of it going up was uh, not too bad, but after that, no. The countryside wasn't that attractive. So if you really want to, if you're going to come this way and you really want a nice mountain route, choose a tizzy and test. It is far superior. You just need a bit of bottle with hairpin bends and a steep drop and the possibility of the odd rock fall, but the, the, it, it's, You've seen in other episodes the scenery was stunning, but we're very near what's it that now, so um, we'll be there tomorrow to get the bike serviced. Oh, so here's Camping Atlas View. Let's have a look. <laughs> Hi chaps, well I think we struck gold for tonight okay in this campsite not only we got these wonderful views of the high Atlas mountains but these are bikes there we are renting this little area we got tables and chairs it is, we got all that over there. All for 60 Durham, which is about a fiver. <laughs> Mental! We don't even have to put our tent up tonight. This is the chap who's offered us, and he's also brought us some tea. Awesome! <laughs> How wicked is this? Good night, everyone. And thank you, thank you for watching. Thank you very much to all the new subscribers and the comments and the likes. Awesome stuff. See you next time. Taddy bye.